Labour Minister has sent shivers down the spines of his compatriots after announcing that the country is a bankrupt state in a radio interview on Sunday. Michelle Asaping later rebutted the comment, saying it was a joke. We have Executive Director at DV Advisors, Patrick Young, here to give us some insight into that statement. Uh, Patrick, was that a harmless a slip? How much trouble is uh, Paris in? Well, look, I mean, this is a remarkable moment in the history of the French French Fifth Estate. We actually finally have a, a politician who's told the truth. In general, he was probably a little bit excessive. France isn't quite bankrupt yet. But the problem is the French government is the biggest economic actor in France. It spends the equivalent of 56.5% of all of the economic activity. The only other countries that spent more, apart from Sweden and the European Union, are places like North Korea. And we all know those are not the world's most prosperous nations. What Mr. Sapin said is absolutely true. We know it. The French Employers Association, various businesses, Business associations for the last year have been saying France is in a state of crisis. There is absolutely no question the French need incredible radical economic reform. It was not present under the Sarkozy administration. And frankly, the feckless inc incompetence of Mr. Hollande, the president, has resulted in the situation we have now. Massive outpourings of cash. 53 billion euros. That's the equivalent of about 2% of the entire economy left the country just during October and November last year because Mr. Hollande has the deluded concept that he can just keep taxing rich people and that will somehow or other make up the imbalance in the economy. So the question is then, is France already facing austerity? Well, actually, it is already facing austerity. I mean, even though Monsieur Hollande has said that he's going to tax and spend, even though he's trying to add another thousands, I mean, I think 5,000 or so teachers to the already incredibly bloated 2 million person French payroll, the truth is that he's trying actually to cut spending by 60 billion over the course of the next year. That in itself is effectively a net cut of about 2% of GDP. Because let's face it, the last time the French government balanced their books was in the middle of the 1970s. So in other words, the vast majority of people watching this program probably weren't even born at the point in time that the last French government managed to balance the books. France is in an appalling crisis. Barely half the country are paying income tax. You've got a situation where, in fact, public opinion is now starting to realize that France is bankrupt. A poll in Le Figaro today, 80% of people agreed with Mr. Sapin's comments. It's no joke what Mr. Sapin said. It's the truth. Should Paris uh, then announce bankruptcy, who would be able to bail them out? They've been helping bail out the rest of Europe. Well, this is the terrible problem, and this is the absolute denouement of the Euro fiasco, because finally we're in the situation of a country that's too big to bail. France cannot be bailed out. If France hits the buffers, then we are going to have the almighty end of the euro project. This delusional currency built on sand, which was an attempt to try and unite north and south of Europe, and is ultimately simply driving a wedge through the entire economy of the whole continent. You know, we can't afford to have 27% of French youth unemployed. Will France declare bankruptcy? No, not now. They don't actually have quite enough debt yet, although they do have a rather staggering 91% debt to GDP ratio. But that's mere amateurs night compared to somebody like the Italians at 120 or the dear old Greeks, probably 160%, although I personally don't believe that. So what you're saying to me is that the Eurozone is going to be okay as long as France doesn't declare bankruptcy in the next couple of months. Well, let's put it this way. I mean, we could all look to the heavens and go oink, 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 because we looked for flying pigs. I don't really see that there's a way that the overarching delusion of the European Union and the Eurozone itself, that they can save themselves from effectively 40, 50, 60 years of pork barrel politics, is somehow or other going to be miraculously saved in the course of the next few months. Ultimately, the lender of last resort in the Eurozone, Germany, is not going to come to the rescue. We had the Prime Minister of Russia, indeed, Mr. Medvedev. He was saying just the other day, Russia has the biggest foreign exchange reserves in the world, something like 500 billion or there or thereabouts. And actually, they're trying to have fewer and fewer holdings in euros. 
it may be another year, it may be a long time, but ultimately the euro has a horrible cancer at its core and it's very, very difficult to see how the currency will survive in the longer term. I want to talk about Paris uh, a little bit here. It's tied up in a military campaign in Mali. That must be costing a fortune. I mean, where's this money coming from? Well, that's a very good question. I mean, there are those who, of course, watched that incredibly interesting movie, Wag the Dog, where famously a lackluster president of the United States of America launched a war somewhere that nobody would really heard of and ultimately tried to win back public opinion. And now here we have, of course, President Hollande, a man who couldn't even decide between his mistresses, apparently, according to his biographers, has ultimately waged the ultimate Wag the Dog movie war. I mean, he's gone all the way to, well, Timbuktu in order to manage to fight. How are they managing to pay for it? That's a very good question. Actually, bear in mind the fact that something like 20% of all the French budget for military, which is a very significant one indeed, goes on actually paying the pensions of the existing war veterans of the French army. Bear in mind also the fact that actually the biggest problem that the French military have had, not amongst the soldiers, they're a very well-trained and excellent fighting force per se, but it's actually been in the logistics they're having to borrow petrol and transporters and aircraft from all sorts of other nations, such as the British, because they can't actually manage to reach the theatre of operations in the middle of Africa. That demonstrates just how overstretched the French economy is. Although, of course, we could bear in mind the fact that actually France is still a top league in terms of military spending. It's one of the bigger spenders in the world on its military. But of course, it has huge problems because it doesn't even have enough petrol tankers to manage to get the aircraft flying all the way to Africa all day long. The, the, the French are very outspoken when it comes to their rights. Could we witness the same amount of street protests like, say, in Greece? Well, I think the situation in France is the fact that you have an amazing economic and educational system that it provides a certain degree of socialist, almost communist imbued thinking within the state. And that lacks, well, you know, that wonderful word in the English language, entrepreneur. Who could have thought of that word, I wonder, in what language? The difficulty is that the French ultimately don't understand the fact that the state will not come to your rescue because ultimately it can't afford to. The French are indignant at the idea that the government is not going to solve all the problems in their massive malaise. But in truth, it can't. There's no money left. The money has run out. Mr. Sapa, the Labour Minister, said a great deal of truth the other day. Absolutely, there is a state, but it's a totally bankrupt state in France. Patrick Young, Executive Director at DV Advisors. We're going to have to leave it right there, but we, it's always a pleasure speaking to you.